Standing by is Congressman Charles Bustani. Hey, Mr. Charles, how are you this morning? Thank you for taking time for us. I'm doing great this morning. Good to be with y'all. We have had a couple of segments over the last couple of days over the latest news, bad news, regarding Obamacare. Um, in the scheme, in the overall scheme of of state-by-state -state rate increases, the fact that Louisiana is supposed to be between like 25 and 30, 25 and 35, Good Lord, man, we're one of the lucky ones. Arizona, 116% rate increases. This thing is, yeah. is more of a nightmare than any. And yet you keep hearing it was designed to fail. What are your thoughts about that? Well, let me just say, uh, when this thing passed, I knew that because of the way they were going to restrict choices and restrict competition, they were going to drive up premium costs. And that's exactly what's happened. And we have seen double-digit premium increases year upon year since Obamacare passed. And, and some of the worst are, are coming right now. Mr. Because Char now we've seen so much restriction in this. I mean, you're right. Anywhere from 25% increase in premiums uh, from last to this past year, all the way up to over 100%. It's crazy. Exactly. You said double-digit. No, trip. imagine. Triple-digit yeah. Premium increases and insurance companies are bailing. But back to the first thought, because there's a lot of folks think that this is just that it was purposely designed to be terrible, to fail, so that the government can come in and rescue it and and rescue it. Hell, you know what I mean. And go to single payer. Well, I was there during all these debates and I listened very carefully. I participated in the debates in committee. I heard directly from the architects of this that they wanted the single-payer system, but they knew politically they couldn't get the votes to do it. So what they did was they designed uh, a system that is basically a de facto single-payer system by over-regulating on the insurance side and severely uh, restricting choice there um, and competition. They did the same. They forced consolidation not only in the insurance area, but also on the provider side. They eliminated basically private the private practice of medicine so now they got this overly regulated system, and they figured, okay, if that's the best we can do, we'll keep it. It will be a de facto single-payer system, but if it fails, people will be screaming for single-payer. And one that's of – one of the, and this exactly is, what they did. This is something you'll know a lot about, that, that – and it's one of the sort of underreported stories of the Obamacare fiasco, is that it's creating more and more a physician shortage. Yes. It is, because um, they have, in the last two to three years, driven physicians out of private practice. Uh, morale is, a lo is very low across the ranks of physicians in this country. We already had a shortage of primary care and key specialties, and it's getting a lot worse because people aren't going. If, if physicians are close to retirement, they're retiring earlier than they – or they're, they're changing careers. This is happening, and it's happening at, a, at a, a, an alarming rate. And a rate that's going to leave us with severe access problems. And uh, I can tell you, we're headed for some major disruption in health care. We're going to need sober voices who understand the health care system, understand the mess we're in today, which is worse than what we had even before Obamacare. And, th and that was not a good situation even back then. But it's a lot worse. We're going to have to fix this problem. That means you're going to have to replace this entire thing. And there are very few people who uh, serve in the United States Congress today that understand how to do that. Now, I'm one of them because I was involved with all this, and I know exactly what we need to do to fix it. I fought tooth and nail. I opposed it every step of the way. I led the charge against it back in 2009 and, and uh, early 2010. Let's shift gears a minute, uh, Congressman Charles Bustani. Um, the, the, another debate bet between you and the, the top contenders in the Senate race is going to include David Duke. Do you wish that wasn't happening? Absolutely. I, I think he's an embarrassment to our state. Uh, the man is an avowed racist, a bigot, a xenophobe. And, you know, every poll that's out there, other than the one that Raycom did, has him barely registering. So I don't know why he's been included. Uh, I, I, I doubt the numbers in the Raycom poll. I don't think they're accurate. Uh, I think this is to create sensationalism, and I think it's a disgrace he'll be on the stage. I think it's going to take away from a substantive debate on the issues, which is what we need to be talking about. 
Uh, things like Obamacare, like you, we just had that conversation. Our national security, which is at risk. We, we saw uh, numbers, uh, early voting kicking off across Louisiana yesterday. Baton Rouge recorded more than 5,000, a record number there. We had uh, 1,400 here in Caddo. We're anticipating record numbers turning out. Does that surprise you? No, it doesn't. Uh, we had a significant uh a significant jump in early voting last time around when we had a presidential election. And I'll tell you, I think um, I think the fact of the matter is I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged by the fact that people are actually, you know, waking up and showing up to vote. We want a high turnout because that's going to that's going to best reflect the will of the people. And it makes our democracy democracy that much uh, stronger if people really do turn out to vote. And uh, what's sad to me is how little the, you know, a lot of the media covered the, the, the Senate race here in the state and some of the other local races because it's been a very sleepy election season. And so I think folks are now just waking up to the fact that we have an election and they're going to have to figure out who to vote for. And, um, you know, we're out there struggling, working hard all across the state, uh, trying to make the point that I'm the one conservative in the race who's got a proven record of getting results. And, you know, we're working, trying to work through all that clutter.